I've been playing Kultik, a retro style boomer shooter made by the indie dev Jason Smith for about a month now, and I've racked up quite a few hours on it. I wanted to challenge myself to something new. I've already beaten the game on every difficulty, gotten every world record in all the categories, and I have all the achievements. So I decided why not try and beat the game without attacking any of the cultists. I wanted to add some extra parameters to this challenge. I need to collect all the imbued remains or HP upgrades and I cannot break the game, as in go out of bounds or any serious glitches. I will be using a movement tech that you can consider a glitch, but it's going to cut the challenge in half. That movement tech is when you bind jump, kick, and dodge all to the same key, and when you press that, it'll make you go flying in the direction that you're looking. I use that term as JKD just to shorten that up. And if you chain some b-hops in there, you'll gain a considerable amount of speed. I'm going to be playing on standard difficulty, so it's not too easy, but also not impossible. All right, now that we got all of that set in place, let's get into this challenge. We start off on the map Grave, where you're supposed to make your way through the prison, but we'll just completely skip that, but jumping over this fence. I'll make my way over to this culvert to get the remains. Then I just gotta be hopped to this level and get some well time JKDs to make it to this boardwalk. Then we just drop into this liquid. Now we pick up this key on the mattress and we have to save this bear because that's what a true pacifist would do. We just have to wait for the harvester and we don't have to do anything other than just jump past him. Now all we have to do is go up through the water, JKD past all these cultists and avoid as many bullets as possible and save the bear and that's the end of grave. You'll see how it says five kills. It's not really me killing them, but them killing each other. Now we're on shipyard. It's going to be the same as before. I'm just going to JKD past all these cultists and try to get to the ship with taking as little damage as possible. Now I just have to figure out a way to get past these cultists. Turns out they'll just kill each other. Now I make it into the vent. I got to take the captain's key from the guy that's taking the map upside down. Now all I have to do is get up to the captain's deck and get the other key for the mine. Turns out this ghost is floating and the egg light is keeping him from going any further. So I'll just go back in this room and think about how I'm going to get past him. And then it hit me. I'll just use this barrel and maybe it'll help me push him back. That worked better than I thought. Now I have to make my way up to the captain's deck so I can get the mine key. Pick up the remains. I'm going to go on the left side of this cliff so I can get to the mine door and take less damage. Once I go through the door, I just have to crouch JKD through the mine so I don't hit my head on all of these beams. After I make it to the end of these mines and the portal in the sky rips open, I'm just going to jump over this fence and roll to take less damage and skip past most of this section. Then we just go through this door, make a couple JKDs to get on top of these shipping containers, and be hop to the end of this level. Now for Mime Town. It's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to pick up some HP here. Normally you're meant to get some items for the bridge, but you can just JKD past it. Now we need to come in here and get past these guys and get the key for the cellar. Then break these boxes to get through the door, open the cellar, and get the key for the mines. So it actually turns out when you get the key for the mines, the door closes and then you have to kill this monster. So we're going to try that again. We still need to break the hole in the wall so we can get the remains. But we don't even need the key for the mines. We can just jump over this wall and then break the hole in the wall to get into the factory. But before we go into the factory, we need to make a quick detour. Then we just got a JKD through the factory, try not to die to this barrel, and then go up here and hit the switch. And then we just wait a couple seconds and we can fall down to the end of the level. We fall into the mines. We just got a JKD as much as possible and try not to fall off any of these catwalks while trying not to kick any of the cultists. I'm gonna pick up this armor because you can catch a lot of straight bullets in this level. I'm gonna skip most of this room by just jumping on the shipping container and then jumping through the catwalk. Then we drop it in the water and then pick up the remains. Now we just make it across this bridge. After that, we go into a tight section of the mine shaft. I need to be pretty careful here and kick towards the wall so I don't kick any of the cultists. I'm gonna let this guy try to shoot me for a minute. I'm going to try to aggro the harvester to the left a little bit and then just kick to the right. After that tie section of the mine shaft, we'll come into a more open room where the wall will explode and one of those buff skeleton head things will run out. You can just JKD past him. The room with the key is kind of tricky. I'm just going to go to the right and get this ballistic armor so I can actually survive it. I'm going to miss picking up the key a couple times just for fun. After that room, we can drop down here and pick up some HP. All that's left now is to unlock the door, JKD past all these enemies, try not to get hit or shot as much as possible. Flip this lever to turn on the power, then we just go to the lift and flip the other lever. All I have to do now is just ride the lift up to the end of the level. You can also crouch here so less enemies shoot at you. And that's the end of mines. Off to the crypts. I'm just gonna check on this guy and see how he's doing. And then I'm just gonna get past these trip mines. Get down the spiral staircase with some style. And then just get blocked from going any further. 
So I just led them back and then dropped down the staircase again. All we have to do is just make it through the level and avoid getting hit by the zombies as much as possible. I'll pick up these remains. I also noticed that my HP was low and I heard the zombies that were following me blow up. So I just went back for the HP they dropped. You can get on top of these platforms and just JKD over all these zombies. Just need to get past this ghost and prepare for what happens after I get this key. So normally you can't slide in water, which is also a good way to move NPCs around. But if you get on top of something that you can slide on and keep spamming it, it'll let you do it in the water. We use the key to open the door and with some well-timed JKDs, we can jump across this room. There's a little gap here that we can just jump through. And then we just get some HP, open the door, and then we can take the lift and do the same crouching thing to take less damage. And that's the end of this level. So for Chapel, we just straight away pick up the remains. I feel like this is our first major roadblock in this challenge. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to get to the end of the level when all you're supposed to do is kill all of the cultists. Then I thought back to Shipyard where they just killed each other, so why not try that here? It actually worked out pretty well. But then I ran into another issue where I didn't know how to get the last one to die. And that's when I was walking around and he just hit the lantern and set himself on fire. And I also had the idea to just barricade myself in and they would just group up and kill each other. And that also seemed to work pretty well. So now all I had to do is repeat that. So I just hid in my little makeshift cubby and waited for the last one. And then he set himself on fire too. I also got kind of lucky with the harvester spawns. I think they spawned 0 to 4, and I only got 1. And it seems like the other cultists killed them. I wanted to see, instead of using lanterns on the last ones, if the barrels would work, and they worked perfectly. The ghost even blew himself up. But now we get into the first real boss of the game. The T26E4 Super. I had no idea how I was going to get past it, until it threw this out of the hatch. And it just so happens they have a large amount of TNT that I need to get rid of. So I decided to be a good person to give it to them. They seem to be using it anyway, so why not give it to someone that actually needs it? And that's the end of Chapel. We get back into a more straightforward level with Asylum's Grounds. What you have to do for the first three sections on this map is make your way to the switches and try to avoid getting hit as much as possible. And then just go through the doors as you power them on. I'm going to stop over at this table to rejuice. Then I'm going to hit the switch and just completely avoid the flamethrower, dude, by jumping over him. You got to make your way over to the shed and then drop into the water. Once you get out to the maze, you just follow the blood trail until you get to the maintenance key. I'm just going to slide past the harvester and then jump past the other one. Once we get to this garage, there's going to be a lot of zombies in here. I'm just going to try to lead as much as I can out and then just go back in and get the gas can. So again, we gotta go up to this mattress, pick up the teddy bear to save him, bring him up on the elevator. Then we just JKD past all the cultists, make our way to the remains, and then again just JKD to the end of the level. Now that we're in the asylum, we just want to make it through the level like we have been, not hitting any of the cultists and avoiding taking as much damage as possible. We're gonna stop over here to get the ballistic armor and the first aid, and then we're gonna jump up here to get the remains. Now we just make it through the rest of the level and get the fuel canister and drop down here and uh, let's try that again and then drop down here and start the generator. Now we just flip the switch and take the lift down. Let's get into our second to last mission excavation site. I'm going to use most of this level to get all my health stuff up, including the ballistic armor, blast armor and my field kit. I'll go into this library and get the remains. I'm going to make it past these two harvesters to get the key, and I'll also pick up this field kit. I'm going to make my way over to the room with all the zombies and lava pits, and avoid hitting all of them. I'll pick up the valve handle, and then make my way back out. If you're enjoying this video so far, it'd be really nice if you could drop a like, comment, and subscribe. But back to the normal commentary. All I have to do is put the valve in and turn it so the lava fall will stop. Then I just got to get the gate key, and then go up and open the gate. Again, getting my health up and getting some armor. I'm just going to jump around to where the other entrance is. Now that I got my armor, I'm just going to try to JKD past all these cultists and get to the end of this level as fast as I can. 
And that's the end of excavation site. It is done. Even stayed true to the pacifist run in the cutscene. Now we're on the final stage, the abomination. I actually have no idea how to defeat this one, so this is going to be the end of the video. Uh, sorry I couldn't complete the challenge uh, later. Did you really think I was going to make this entire video and not beat the final boss? I figured out when he did his explosive barrel attack, you can make him hit himself if you stand in a specific position. So I just continued to do that over and over again until his shield broke. It took some perseverance dodging all of his other attacks, but his shield did end up breaking in the end. And it just so happens that I still have some TNT I need to get rid of, so I just did. And then a red-coated cultist spawned and threw a TNT right where I was trying to get rid of mine. Then I went back into the rotation of letting him hit himself, and also sometimes the cultist would damage him too. I figured out if I stood in a certain position, one of the cultists would shoot at me, but actually hit the abomination. I just repeated getting rid of my TNT and he just did the same thing. Also a cultist with a pistol at the other end spawned, so I just stood in between him and the head of the abomination and he just kept shooting him. I let the rest of the death of the abomination play out, where they destroy their own creation. So yeah, that was beating Cultic without attacking any of the cultists, and we beat it in just over 35 minutes. If you enjoy Cultic content and you want to watch some speedruns, you can watch this video next. Later.